and then we got a delivery from China. Then WNM, I think, yeah, it's WNMG. I have some WNMGs, but not many. Good quality. I'd like to compare them to the Chinese ones. They actually, they look good. I'll show you how they perform. And some tool holders, because I didn't have a WNMG holder. They actually look quite good. We'll see how they perform. Uh, I bought 16, so I can use it in the small lathe as well. I'd probably buy a 20 as well for the bigger lathe. But I'll try this one on the big lathe for now. Uh, I think it was um, uh, 15 or 16 pounds, 20 dollars with 10 inches. You can't beat that really. Uh, we'll see how it performs. So let's put an insert in and uh, try it. Okay, we turned it around, dialed it in. It's about a hundred of a millimeter here and just over a hundred, but uh, the surface is not very nice. But it runs through. I'm happy with that. We taped it up a little bit just to make sure we're not gonna leave that much marks on that. It's not super critical because we're not we're not gonna clamp anything on that. It's the bearing sits here and the, the taper lock sits. Uh, sorry, the taper lock sits here and the bearing about here. Um, so I put an old tool in because that's really rusty. So we're gonna scrub that off and then we'll try the WNMG and see how it performs. Doing all right. I can do probably about one and a half millimeters depth of cut, uh, and then we're running out of horsepower in the machine because that material is tough. But the finish looks really nice. Uh, not unhappy with, for the price. We'll see how it lasts. But the good thing on the WNMG is uh, we got six cutting edges. So we'll see. The TNMG from yesterday lasted, is still okay and I did a lot of turning on it. So we'll see how it does. Chip breaker works sometimes. Depends a, bit, depends a bit on the speed. If you go higher in speed, the chip breaker doesn't work anymore. It's producing massive, lengthy, stringy chips. But at the moment it's okay. Alright, let's carry on. Look at these lovely chips here. Doing all right. Uh, I'm surprised. Still wondering how long it's going to last. Because, uh, yeah, it's not the average mild seal. I'm surprised how little heat this actually puts into the, the material here. Chips are getting really hot, but uh, chip looks fine. And I did some really heavy cuts just right now. And uh, yeah, temperature looks okay. Uh, look at the chips. Very nice and crumbly. Pretty big chips for that machine. I only have two horsepower, so that's where you run out of power with deep cuts. I increased the speed a little bit. We'll see if it makes it any better. Still doing well, but uh, we're driving quite a bit of current here. That's almost 10 amps, which is about the maximum the machine or the motor can do. Alright, we'll see some sparks coming out in, so I think it's probably a bit too fast, but uh, that's really hot. Alright, let's see how it is. So we had about 40.7 or something like that. Uh, we just do the outside diameter. And then we let it cool down. Uh, yeah, it turns out. I'm surprised. Uh, this is tough for the insert. Right.
So we got our pipes set up. Uh, it's 654 long, so we marked it exactly in the center. Um, we're gonna take the big angle grinder and cut it. Uh, obviously secured it, there are some blocks down here, so it doesn't move. Um, if you cut things like that, always cut upwards. Depends on how the blade rotates, but make sure you always, the rotation forces you always out of the cut. If it forces you in the cut, you're in trouble. So let's give that a try. Obviously safety glasses and all, and all the gear. see what happens. It's gonna be loud. It's the first time we really use our uh, I think it was 10 quid angle grinder bought on an auction. Seems to do well. Let's try it. As you probably see, always let the grinder do the work. The grinder moves it forward. Never push because that's not going to be good. It's not very straight, I see that. But it doesn't matter, we're going to face it off anyway. We've got about 7 millimeters at least, which we can face off, so that's fine. Let's do one more. Come on. Laugh. Too bad. The last bit is always a bit dangerous, but uh, I just left a little, a very little bit at the top, and I just cut that off. And this survived. I could put have something underneath, but I don't care. All right. So we cut it through and uh, debrued the edges a little bit. Uh, we're just checking the diameter. It appears. It's a bit, it's a bit egg-shaped because in this direction, in this direction I got play, and in this direction it's just about right. So we probably about one millimeter thinner here than here so we need to form that a little bit uh, I checked that before it's that end which is a bit compressed 
nothing you can do. It's about a millimeter. Um, Exhaust. Uh, yeah, it's about one, one, one point five millimeter. So what we're gonna do? We use a bottle jack and just expand it a little bit until it's around. That's the reason why I bought this big micrometer because I didn't have one. So that's not too concerning. I checked a few other dots and I can't see any big dents. It's very consistent. This side is plus and this side is minus. So we expand it either here or compress it here on the press. We'll see. It's not much. Um, the disc which we make the discs or well, I'm actually waiting for a quote for the discs because the laser cutting guy has let me down a little bit. I'm waiting for about 10 days now and he didn't come back with a quote. Anyway uh, that's it for now from those because I don't have the discs so we're gonna wait until this guy comes back to me or we're gonna look for another supplier it's a pain he promised me I get a quote on Tuesday but now it's Friday and I still haven't one yeah but there are others if he doesn't want the job another one gets it all right